Welcome, Holy Angels family, to the third in our three-part series discussing the deeper meaning of Advent. These short videos are serving as a preview to the new faith formation program that has been created and will start in person in January. It's called The Gift, Growing in Faith Together. Hello, my name is Rob Schlanzer, and I am a parishioner here at Holy Angels. Today, I'd like to pivot from the Advent preparation that has been discussed in the first two videos to the celebration of the Christmas season. And let me start with a quick pop quiz. For us Catholic Christians, when does the Christmas season start? A, when Christmas decorations are rolled out the day after Halloween along with the on sale extra candy, or B, Black Friday, or for you younger folks, Cyber Monday, or C, the Solemnity of Christmas, when we celebrate the Feast of the Nativity, Christmas Day? Of course, the answer is C. Uh, certainly, our commercialized world would have you believe it could be A, and that the midpoint of Christmas season is Black Friday these days. So if Christmas Day is just the start of the Christmas season, then you might ask, how long does it last? Well, that's a two-part answer. The Christmas season ends when we celebrate the baptism of our Lord, and this year that's January 9th. The second part of, the, uh, of this understanding is to understand that the incarnation of our Lord is such a joyous celebration that we celebrate it for an entire week or the octave of Christmas. Much like you may celebrate your birthday for the entire week, we celebrate the Christmas mystery for eight days. So in order to experience our faith more deeply this Christmas season, let's take a little bit deeper look and explore what the Catechism teaches us ab about the Christmas mystery. In Catechism 1171, in the liturgical year, the various aspects of the one Paschal mystery unfold. This is also the case with the cycle of feasts surrounding the mystery of the Incarnation, Annunciation, Christmas, and the Epiphany to commemorate the beginning of our salvation and communicate to us the first fruits of the Paschal mystery. If you're like me, I often have to revisit the meaning of the words of my faith. The first here is Paschal mystery. The Paschal mystery is a core doctrine of the church, one of the essential beliefs of all Christians. Along with the incarnation and the Trinity, it forms the core of our faith. The Paschal mystery, then, is Christ's work of redemption, accomplished principally by his passion, death, resurrection, and glorious ascension, where dying, he destroyed our death, rising, he restored our life. Which then leads us to the word incarnation, which you likely know that it means the Son of God assumed human nature and became man. But if we dig a little bit deeper, the definition in the glossary of the catechism goes on to explain that the reason for this, uh, this was to accomplish our salvation in that same human nature. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, is both true God and true man, not part God and part man. And so what does the catechism say about Christmas that can help enhance our worship this year? In paragraph 525 it says, Jesus was born in a humble stable, into a poor family. Simple shepherds were the first witnesses to this event. In this poverty, heaven's glory was made manifest. Now let me pause here and talk about poverty, as that is another word that can be confusing in our faith compared to the secular world. What is meant here is poverty of faith, which means being humble in front of God recognizing that we need him in our lives. And so the catechism then continues. The church never tires of singing the glory of this night. The virgin today brings into the world the eternal, and the earth offers a cave to the inaccessible. The angels and shepherds praise him, and the magi advance with the star. For you are born for us, little child, God eternal. Do you hear the joy in that? It is marvelous. 
This is why we celebrate the octave of Christmas. We want to experience this glory over and over. Each day is celebrated with equal joy as to that which we had on the feast day. You know, a way to think about this joy is to think back to your childhood and the experience of Christmas joy you had as a child. Our catechism even reflects on this childlike joy in the following and in the next paragraph uh, 526. To become child in relation to God is the condition for entering the kingdom. For this we must humble ourselves and become little. Even more, to become children of God, we must be born from above or born of God. Only when Christ is formed in us will the mystery of Christmas be fulfilled in us. Christmas is the mystery of this marvelous exchange. O oh, marvelous exchange, man's creator has become man, born of the virgin. We have been made sharers in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share our humanity. And so I'll leave you with this. We have likely heard, or you have likely heard, the phrase, let's put the Christ back in Christmas. Given the commercialized view and secular view of the holiday, that's a really good starting point. But let me offer you this a little bit deeper. Let's put the mass in Christmas. Come home this year. Celebrate the holy day and the entire Christmas season with your holy angels family. Peace and joy to you and your family this Christmas season. God bless.